it again. George is right. He's a menace. Nobody's safe. Everybody ought to get together. We'll show that hawk. Drift back into town. Take it easy and don't all go together. How about you, Hawk? I'll be all right, Cochran. I'll get rid of these clothes and ride back to my uncle's ranch. He thinks I went into town to shop at the general store. Well, you got yourself a newspaper editor anyway. Yes, the Powder River News won't bother us anymore. Figured out that payroll job yet, Hawk? No, when I get the information, I'll let you know. Right.
Tax the scene, Vivian. Well, Frank, I never got as far as town, Uncle Bill. I uh, ran into Mike Cochran on the road. He told me that the hawk had just been on another raid. Confound that thieving maverick. I killed poor old George Daniels. Shot up the newspaper office. Killed old George, huh? Well, I guess that ends the news. Nobody else will want to run it. I'm glad you changed your mind and came back. Well, I was so frightened. I was all goose pimples. Everybody's frightened, Uncle Bill. What's going to be done about the hawk? I don't know. I'm sorry Carol's coming home tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, I got a letter from her today. It'd be nice to have my daughter home again, but with this hawk on the loose, I... Has, uh... Has Carol finished her schooling now? Yeah. Got the hash marks in her class, too. I guess you'll be glad for another woman's company. Yeah, it'll be nice to have the young folks around again. Especially when the young fellas come to Spark. What? Oh, oh of course. It'll be wonderful having her back. We're going to have lots of fun. Well, I got some chores to do. See you later. Bye-bye. she didn't figure on. Getting pretty close to that cave. Take it easy. Maybe he won't spot it. What's up, Bill? Look, see what I stumbled onto? The Hawks hideout, and right here on my own property. Yeah, what makes you so sure? Well, all you gotta do is look. Hey, wait a minute. These don't look like no men's clothes. They're small. You got the odor of perfume on them. They belong to a woman. There's horse tracks out there. There's a broken nail in the right hind shoe. Vivian's horse. You're doing an awful lot of guessing, Bill. Guessing? I've got eyes, ain't I? I must be crazy. Vivian couldn't be the hawk. Say, how did you men know I was here? We saw you find the cave, Chambers. And we didn't like what we saw. Then you two are... Open up that powder and set the fuse.
Java Hawk is going to like this. She'll have to like it. If Chambers had started an investigation, we'd have all been hanged. Get up to the house and tell her what happened. No sense feeling bad about your uncle, Vivian. It was either him or us. Oh, I don't care about him. He was an old fool. Being killed the way he was is going to be hard to explain. You and Cochran better have your alibis straight. Don't worry, we will. Well, this is more than I expected. Bill Chambers and his daughter out of the way in the same day. This is my ranch now. I suppose you and Cochran will be getting hitched now. Whatever gave you an idea like that? You know how he feels about you. So what? Well, if you and he got married, it might split up the gang. Well, when I'm ready for romance, I'll let you know. In the meantime, you mind your own business, and I'll tend to mine. You sent for us, Hawk? Yes, what's up? Something wrong? Plenty. My cousin gets back here tomorrow. Bill Chambers' daughter? Mm hmm She's finished with school. I've hunched she's going to get in our way, boys. How? I thought you were smart, Cochran. For my uncle's lawyer. You know the way his will reads as well as I do. Carol's next in line to inherit the Chambers' ranch. If uh, she isn't alive, I get it. Sure, I know that, but... Uh... Well, so long as we have the ranch as a hideout, no one will ever suspect us. The setup's perfect. In other words, you want Carol Chambers out of the way. Took you a long time to catch on. You got any ideas how you want the job done? Yes. Tomorrow, when the stage comes through Indian Gulch. I found a rose in an old mission town. of San Jose. She was a dream in an old fashioned gown. Just make sure you men do a good job. Remember, nobody leaves the stage alive. When we kill the Chambers girl, we don't want any witnesses.
the name of Chambers? Yeah. I'm Carol Chambers. I'm Eddie Dean. Your life is in danger. But why? I don't know, Miss Chambers. I just heard a bunch of cutthroats say they were going to attack the stage and get you. But that's ridiculous. I'll ride along with you. You may need some help. Get back to town, boy. What? Take the road out across Mustang Flat. You bet. Get off. Hurry. taking a different road. We let the Chambers girl get away. I don't know, but I got a score to settle with that fellow who was riding with the driver. You boys know him? Looks like Eddie Dean. I seen him operating Tombstone. If I were you, Cochran, I wouldn't try to settle any scores with him. Oh. All right, Miss Chambers. It's a good thing you rode along with us, Eddie. It was just luck I happened to hear what those men were up to. Hi, Eddie. Hiya, so. So you finally got here. You know, I've got calluses all over my calluses. Just sitting around waiting for them. <laughs> Miss Chambers, this is my pal, Sophie Jones. He left Tombstone just ahead of me, and we're just not catching up with each other. Glad to meet you, Sophie. Howdy, ma'am. Uh, you're not related to Bill Chambers, the owner of the H-42 Ranch, are you? I'm his daughter. <laughs> you don't think you'd have to need a couple cow hands, would it? Sophie, why don't you keep quiet? I can't keep quiet. You see, Eddie doesn't understand. I'm the financial advisor of the team. <laughs> the only trouble is that we ain't got no finances to advise now. My father can always use a couple of good men. Why don't you come down and see us at the ranch whenever you wish? Thanks, ma'am. You're a mighty fine lady to do business with. Sophie, if you had any brains, I'd knock them out. Nonsense. In fact, I feel much safer with you around, Eddie in case there should be any more attempts on my life. Well, in that case, we're working for the H Bar 2 right now. I'll take them. Miss Chambers? Yes. My name is Copper. I was your father's lawyer. Was? I'm sorry, Miss Chambers. Your father met with an accident just a little while ago. Oh, an accident? Well, where is he? I want to see him. It wouldn't do much good, Miss Chambers. He's dead. Oh. What happened? I don't know exactly. It looks as if some blasting powder he had on his ranch went off suddenly. Oh, that's too bad. Looks like somebody had better luck with Bill Chambers than they did with his daughter. Well, he tried to kill her, too. 
That puts a different light on it. Have you told the sheriff about it? I was just on my way in to tell him. All right, you do that, and I'll see that Miss Chambers gets out to the ranch. Sure. Maybe you ought to go out for a ride or something, Carol. That's right, ma'am. You ain't done nothing but just mope around for the last week. I just can't believe my father's death was an accident. And if somebody killed him... The sheriff will find that out. And if he doesn't, we will. But it may take a little time. Well, I'll bet this old hat, sweat band and all, that the same fellas who held up the stagecoach was mixed up in it, too. You'd probably win that bet, Soap. Thanks. Eddie, how do you feel about the boys that work on the ranch? Oh, some of them are all right. I knew them down in Texas. But these others I wouldn't trust as far as I could throw a horse. I felt that same way, too. But Vivian gets along with them all right. Yeah, she does. Would Vivian inherit this ranch if something happened to you? What do you mean by that? Just what it sounds like. I'm not trusting anybody until this is cleared up. Oh, well, Hawk. I want to talk to you a minute. I thought I told you to call me Vivian around here. Well, all right, but what I wanted to tell you was, I don't like the idea of that Dean being around here. What if he finds out who it was that held up that stagecoach? There's still a lot of dust being kicked up over my uncle's death. We've got to take things easy until everything quiets down. Don't bother Dean until I tell you to. All right. We're rounding up the cattle in the North Range, Dean. You and your sidekick better saddle up. Right. How about coming along with us, Carol? Do you good to get away from the ranch house. Sure, ma'am. There ain't nothing like the open range to make you forget your troubles. Your dad would have liked you to take more interest in the ranch. What do you say? All right, boys. You talk me into it. That's the spirit. You know, if I had known that there was going to be a pretty girl like you in the roundup, I wouldn't mind being a cow myself. <laughs> <laughs> Punchinello, 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 the punchy cow puncher. He lassoed a poor little doggie one day, and the crowd on the fence shouted hip, hip, hooray, but he branded himself, and the calf got away. He's the pride of the tenderfoot trail. What a fellow, Punchinello, all the things that he did were a sin. He would saddle his pony up backwards, cause he wanted to see where he'd been. Punchinello, 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 the punchy cow puncher. He twirled his two stick guns around with a spin, and the roar of the shots made a terrible din. Now he has but nine toes, where he used to have ten. He's the pride of the tenderfoot trail. What a fellow, punching now, oh, the things that he did were a joke. But he'd wind up the one who got broke. Four feet till he mounted a horse known as Poisonous Pete. Now he sleeps on his face and he stands up to eat. He's the pride of the Tenderfoot Trail. What a fellow, punching mellow. All the things that he did were a laugh. When the cook put some salt in his coffee, Punchy saw the chuck wagon and had. He packed up his duds and he pulled out of town, but he soon became known as a man of renown, for he's famous at last as a rodeo clown. He's the pride of the tenderfoot trail. What a fellow, Punchinello, all the dough that he's made in a hay. Now he owns a big ranch down in Texas, where I'm working for two bucks a day.
you are, Carol. That song was just for you. Thanks, Eddie. I feel much better already. That's right, Miss Carol. Eddie's saying it'll cure everything but the stomach ache. Oh, I think it'll cure a pain in the ribs, too. <laughs> Miss, without humor. Mitchell, I want you to get the boys together at the rocks near the cave tomorrow night. I came across some information this afternoon that might be very interesting. Good. It's about time we got into action. Chambers' daughter's been getting in our way. Well, she won't much longer. Got to get rid of her before Cochran has an official reading of the will. I get it. If we get her out of the way before the will is read, nobody will think you had anything to do with it. Sure. No one knows that my uncle told me what was in the will. You're pretty smart, Vivian. I gotta hand it to you. Now, about this other job. I'll tell you all tomorrow night. Then I found out that Larry Hadley will be carrying the Bar X payroll from the bank at 2.30. Now, we've got to get Hadley before he gets to the ranch. Have you all got your instructions straight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. And don't bungle this job the way you did the attack on the stagecoach. Things up a little, Sophie. and hand over your money. Eddie Dean! Larry! What's going on? Oh, hold up. They got my pick. Well, let's get it back.
sure wish we knew who that fellow was. Hey, any name in a hat? No, but we're going to put one in it. Oh, that's a good idea. Put mine in it. It might fit me. I up to... What do you mean, put a name in it? The fellow that lost his hat's going to want it back pretty bad. He won't want it traced if he had anything to do with that attempted payroll robbery. That's just as clear as mud in a sandstorm. I'll make it clear for you. Yeah, what are you going to do? All we have to do is put a little X on the inside of the band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now after the band gets his hat, all we got to do is find a hat with a duck in it. You know people are going to think we're plum loco going around looking in hats. It won't be that bad, Toby. You should be able to find it here, all right. We'll make sure Hadley gets to the ranch, and then we'll go after Cochran. Yeah, uh-huh. That's right. Oh, well, don't fit anyway. I tell you, Cochran, we've got to get rid of that Dean. This is the second time he's gotten our way. It's the hawk's fault. She's scared to death of him. Well, I'm not going to put my neck in a sling because of her. She's trying to play things too smart. Everything's gone wrong ever since Chambers' daughter and Dean got here. I tell you, they both got to be put out of the way. All right, all right. I'll talk to the hawk about it. Meanwhile, send one of the boys out for my hat. I don't want it found in that vicinity. Hey, here comes Dean now. If he's coming up to see me, you better hang around. He may start something. It's all right with me if he does start something. Come in. Well, well, Eddie Dean, I'm glad to see you. Have a chair. Won't be here that long, Cochran. The first thing I want to know is, why are you holding up the reading of Bill Chambers' will? Why, uh, no particular reason, Dean. We just haven't got around to it yet. What's the matter, too busy? What business is it of yours, Dean? Miss Carroll asked me to make it my business. What's she worried about? She must know that her father would leave her the ranch. Yeah, and there might be some other names in that will we'd want to know about, just in case something happens to Miss Carroll. And just what do you think's going to happen to her? Nothing if I can help it, so don't get any ideas. Why, you... Drop it, Mitchell. Next time you've got to feel a little cannon around with you, then you won't have to make a fast draw. I don't want any gunplay in this office, Dean. If you have arguments to settle, do it someplace else. If you don't want any gun play in this office, you'd better read that will tomorrow. You can't order me around. Tomorrow. Mind telling me where we're going? We're not taking any chances. We're hiding you out in an abandoned shack until that will is read tomorrow. I up to, to can't find you, the can't hurt you. You'll be safe enough at the shack. A couple of the boys I know will be standing guard. Meantime, Sobe and I won't do a little more looking around. Just a couple of bloodhounds, that's us. And you got just the face for it. Yeah, I could... Uh, huh? <clears throat> what happened on the payroll job from the other boys. That isn't all. Dean was up to my office. He said if I didn't read that will tomorrow, he was going to do a little shooting. Oh, he did, did he? Well, so that's what they're up to. What do you mean? I saw Dean and that sidekick of his riding off with Carol. I bet they're going to hide her out. Why, that... We've got to find Carol before Dean forces Cochran to read the will. Mitchell, you get the boys together and we'll comb this neighborhood until we do find her. Right. Cochran, go back to town and spread the word around that you're reading the will tomorrow. That ought to make it sound better to the sheriff. Here she is, boys. Take good care of her. Don't worry, Eddie. We will. Carol, make yourself comfortable till you hear from me. Thanks, Eddie. Yes, sir, boys. In all probability, Carol Chambers will inherit the H of R2. I'm reading the will tomorrow. Here's to the richest little lady in town. Hey, wait a minute. 
Would you mind telling me why we're going in to see Cochran again? You like him? No, I just got a hunch, Soapy. I wouldn't be surprised if Cochran's thrown in with Vivian just because he wants to marry her. She might inherit the H bar too someday. Yeah, that could be. Maybe we can ask him a few questions he'll have to answer. All right. Well, looks like you're going to have to wait to ask all them questions, Eddie. Maybe we're going to get some answers without asking questions. Yeah, then Cochran's a man who won't. Looks like it. Can you imagine him robbing payroll? <laughs> Lawyer business sure must be bad. Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad. We'd like to have a little talk with you about your hat, Cochran. Yeah? Why? It just so happened that you dropped it when you and your men tried to steal the payroll from Larry Hadley. You're crazy. That hat's been with him all the time. Except when he lost it after the payroll job. You see, I marked the hat. When I found it out on the range, just so as I'd know it the next time I saw it. Cochran, I'm taking you into the sheriff. You ain't taking anybody. <laughs> Cochran, while you're still able. What is it you want to know? What'd you have to do with that payroll robbery? Well, I only take orders. From whom? I can't tell you. <laughs> All right. Have it your way. I'll tell you. I get my orders from the Hawk. The Hawk? Yes. Vivian Chambers. You're a liar. <laughs> if you don't believe me, she's out with her gang right now, searching for Carol. Get these men to the sheriff. Come on, Sobey. three of the H bar two boys over there. It may be where they have the Chambers girl. Well, we'll find out quick enough. You do the talking. Here they come, boys. Better stay out of sight, Miss Chambers. What makes you think she's here? We're just guessing, but we're coming in for a look. If you're smart, you won't try it.
hawk. that you've rounded up the Hawkiner gang, wouldn't you like to stay and be foreman of the H-Bar, too? I appreciate the offer, Carol, but Soby and I like to keep on the move. That's right, ma'am. Traveling's more in our line. we got to keep moving. You see, our horses have pants in their saddles. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Eddie. Good luck. Sunset. 